In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Lord, graciously give us your Holy Spirit. Guide us from within. Show us your light, your discernment. Incline our hearts toward yours. Draw us to you, O oh Lord. We ask you this through the powerful intercession of Our Lady, who is always present among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, good evening, uh, everybody, and welcome to this uh, lesson, lesson 32, on the um, Dark Night of the Saints, book one. And uh, we continue where we stopped uh, the other day. So, let me share with you. Sorry for that. So we stopped the other day at um, the beginning of paragraph uh, five in the book of um, The Dark Knight, book one. The indications we find here in the in this uh, the end of this book one, and remember he doesn't separate them in book one and book two. It's just uh, us uh, making this uh, division. The end of this book one, uh, he has interesting uh, questions. He raises interesting uh, questions. Um, how long it takes, for instance and uh, also um, he will talk then about the strength of the person uh, to be able to bear and undergo uh, the following uh, sufferings it's very interesting i would say these are in a way uh, modern questions if you want that he uh, raises so we just finished the uh, talking about the um, three different attacks of uh, three types of uh, spirits uh, that are possible, not the three of them together, not necessarily the three of them for the same person, but uh, they, they, they are there. And we understood from the last time where God permits, allows these, uh, these attacks to happen. It's because he is humiliating, not in a negative sense, like humbling, I prefer the person, preparing the person for the further trials, uh, inviting the person to do a strong act of, of faith, uh, to pierce these obstacles and difficulties. And um, also, I added uh, last time, uh, this, this is some new discernment happening, occurring here. There's discernment, I would say, of the, of, uh, the brave ones and the strong ones. And uh, this is necessary for the coming uh, stages. Otherwise, the person will not be able to bear that. Now, paragraph five, he starts with this question. For how long a time the soul will be held in this fasting and penance of sense? Cannot, for how long? It cannot be said with any uh, certainty. Well, thank you, John of the Cross. We don't know. He doesn't know. We don't know. But still, he will give us some interesting indications. For all do not, the reason, all do not experience it after one manner, in the same way. Neither do all encounter the same temptations. The translation is correct, following the, the, the Spanish. For this is, how do you say this in English? Method? Method? Method. Uh, Meted, okay, like um, using it as a measured, uh, no? Yes, measured. measured out. 
So this is, uh, yes, measure out, measured out by the will of God. Okay, fine. In con what then? How does God measure things? That's interesting, no? How he's introduced in the mind of God to understand why God does this, etc. In conformity with the greater or the smaller degree of in imperfection, which each soul has to purge away. First explanation is this. How much is needed to be purified? You know, a person like St. Therese of the Child Jesus, I mean, what do you want to purify in her? As uh, Father Louis, my master, would say, you know, uh, <laughs> she, she landed uh, almost, <laughs> almost pure. It's like, what do you want to, to do there? Not to be compared with other people who uh, are uh, diving and swimming in, 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 in sins and so forth. So, of course, the purification, the, the need for purification is longer, and, and we understand that. In conformity, likewise, with the degree of love of union to which God is pleased to raise it. You see? Now, how is the person? Fine. But now, what is the goal? To which, ex to which level of perfection God wants to raise this per person? What is the degree of love, of union? To which God is pleased to raise it, to raise it, sorry. As a consequence, he will humble it with greater or less intensity or in greater or less time. Interesting, eh? interesting, no? He will humble it with greater or less intensity or in greater or less time. And notice the use here of the uh, expression. Uh, humble. Uh, the Spanish is a bit tough. It's to humiliate, hmm? uh, humiliar, humiliara. Um, but don't please don't take it in a negative way. To humble means to go down and create a space for God. That's the real and the proper understanding of spiritual life. What is it exactly? It's to humble us means to create a space to remove all that is not God in us. So it's humbling me. You know? And we need that. We need the real, the truth of who we are. We need to, and, and St. Therese of Avila would say that humility is, um, is truth and truth is humility. So humility is not a fake attitude. Humility is really who we are and who, and who God is, you see? So when he says to humble it, it means just to remove, to empty, to prepare, to create the space. You know? Be a space for me, says God to um, one of the mystics in the Middle Age, and I will be a torrent. Yeah? Create the space in you, and I will be a torrent of, of love uh, in you, you see. So that's, that's the, the, the thing. No? He needs space, his space in us. We are created uh, uh, in his image, no? is that correct? In his image and likeness. And, uh, and this uh, uh, creating the space again allows him to, to be there. So he will humble it with greater or less intensity or in greater or less time. He doesn't say if it's longer, then it means it's better. Mm. Uh, but okay, fine. He says intensity and time. Those who have the disposition and greater strength to suffer. This is interesting here, is, is, uh, I feel. Uh, those who have the disposition uh, and greater strength to suffer must Fuerza para sufrir con más intención. Uh, the disposition. So you see, that's 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 stuff. Huh? That's stuff. What does it mean? There are people who are too weak. They don't have uh, strength. They don't suffer. They they no. There is no resilience. Is it caused by who they are, how they are built by God? Is it caused by the education they received? You know, sometimes education can be very tough, so it toughens you, you know, you are stronger, in you, you, are, you can resist 
certain um, adversities or, or, or trials? I don't know. You see, it can be both. It can be, uh, you see, nature or nurture. It, it can be a, a little bit of both. This is me talking, of course, not him. Be careful. He purges to those who have this position and greater strength. He purges with greater intensity and more quickly. So you see here, I, I, I just said uh, above, he didn't say greater or less time. Here he says it. So if there is disposition to suffer, if the person knows that this is correct, if the person has some strength and can ask for strength also, then the intensity is greater and it's quicker. I, I always will, will say, even though it's not written in, in St. John of the Cross text, but I will always say that the trial of going through for the apostles to go through the passion of the Lord is exactly that trial. They lose everything. They lose Jesus. So it's three days, even less than three days. But the intensity, intensity of it is pure horror. Uh, they spent three, day, three years, day after day with him, watching him, seeing him, listening to him, uh, being witnesses of, of many miracles, even themselves performing miracles and so forth. And then after these fabulous three years, he disappears, he dies. The intensity of these three days, less than three days from the moment the passion starts, say um, Monday, Thursday, until the early hours and maybe a little bit after of Sunday, that's pure horror for them because they experience First, they betray him. They don't follow him. Peter says, I don't know him I, and repeats it three times. Um, nobody's there except John to be, to be with him uh, and with Our Lady. So it's like you experience your, 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 your utter uh, weakness and nothingness. So you see the intensity here is, is huge, but it's relatively quick. It's three days. You wish that. But those who are very weak are kept for a long time in this night. Interesting. No comment. Those who are very weak. So it's like on and off, on and off, on and off. Because if you put too much pressure, the person will not bear it. And it is tough. It is tough. Okay. Uh, the, we are talking still about the night of the saints. We are not talking about the coming one. And the night of the saints is these moments where the lower part of the, 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 the lower part of our being, the house of the saints, is emptied from everything. And these he purges very gently and with slight temptations. So remember the three horrible temptations he's just mentioned. We had that last lesson the spirit of fornication, the spirit of vertiginous, and the spirit of uh, blasphemy. These are tough temptations. And here he says, no, slight temptations. No? Um, flacas tentaciones. Flacas means weak. Weak. Habitually, too, he gives them refreshments of sense so that they may not fall away. See the pedagogy of God. Because if he pressurizes too much, if he empties too much, there, is no there are no consolations at all. For a weak person, the person will think that, well, then, then, then God is not there. I did something, then I did something wrong, and, and the person might be tempted to abandon God. And God has to prevent that. So he goes very lightly, and I'm, I, me, Jean, I'm tempted to say, uh, he will never finish it. Why? Because it goes on and off, on and off. So he cannot accomplish the, the purification because he has just to, to do a little bit and then stop, or a little bit and stop. So almost the person is going in circles instead of progressing. You see what I'm trying to say? So he gives refreshments of sense so that they may not fall away. And only after a long time do they attain the purity of perfection in this life some of them never attaining it, to it at all. He's talking out of observing and watching. 
and knowledge of, of people, uh, seeing things around him, uh, etc. Okay, so you see here, uh, the goal is to attain, to attain a certain pu purity of, uh, of perfection, purity of perfection, okay? Now, if you have any question, please, please do, do ask your question. No? Such are neither properly in the night nor properly uh, out of it. Horrible, no? They are not totally, neither in it or out of it. They are sort of uh, one foot in the purification and one foot out. So you see, you see the problem here. Yeah? You see the problem. When, when the church says everybody is called to, to holiness, I mean, come on. It's complex. It's complex. We are called to holiness, yeah, but are we, we, will we ever reach this holiness? Some people will not. Many people, as he says, will not. Why? Because any difficulty, any trial, people, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, it's too difficult. So, well, then God can, can't do anything, you see. So they are neither properly in the night nor properly out of it. It's like decide yourself. No, this is what he says in the book of uh, Revelation. No, I vomit the the lukewarm. Be hot or cold, but lukewarm. I can't bear that. For although they make no progress. I'm reading the text, yet in order that they may continue in humility and self-knowledge, you see, you see the pedag pedagogy of God. God knows that they are not progressing, but he doesn't want to lose them. So they are, in fact, he wants them, in fact, to stay more or less in the area where they are, which means going in circles. So in order to achieve that, in order to not to lose them, so going totally backward, God exercises them for certain periods and at certain times in those temptations and aridities. So it's not constant. It's, it's, it's not, okay, they are weak, they can't, but he has to keep them to a certain extent in a minimum of humility and self-knowledge. So from time to time, he sends these some temptations and aridities. So it's not really the dark night. As he said, uh, they are neither properly in or out. They are just maintained and protected, but no progress. It's, it's amazing. These last sentences of this book is, are amazing. In, it's, it's just evaluation, just the statistics almost. Hmm? He's, he's almost giving us some statistics according to him, no? And he, he explains. Uh, it's not just uh, some revealed truth he's giving us. He's explaining to us. That's the huge advantage with John of the Cross. He gives you the thing, but he says why and how. It's not just imposed on us. It's not, he's not dogmatic, if you want. Uh, he's not dogmatic, as we would say in English. And at other times and seasons, he assists them with consolations, which is not his will. <laughs> that's, that's very interesting here. That's not God's will, but he's just maintaining them. Lest they should go grow faint and return to seek the consolations of the world. So God is offering a protection, which is not growth, so he sort of keeps them there, more or less. It's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, it's crazy because this is an in-between situation. Uh, it's, it's, they are not progressing, but as, as really a father, God, as a father, he doesn't want them to go back to the world, you see. So he puts them on the margin, aside, you know, on the hard shoulder, as we say in the UK, you know, the, when you drive on the motorway, you, you are there on the hard shoulder, you know, on the side of the, the big motorway. And uh, you're not advancing, but you're not go 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 going back. 
it's, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible, these, these few words he's uh, giving us here. Other souls, you see, some people, some others, etc. He's watching, he's watching. He's, uh, he's uh, trying to understand what is happening. Why this person is, what happened to this person? How God is acting here? Why is God doing it this way? It's amazing, it's amazing. I don't know if you, if you, if you see this or if you, can, if you appreciate this uh, analysis that he's offering us here. Other souls, which are weaker, you see, we go back to the concept of weak. I, 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 I talked about St. Paul. He doesn't mention uh, explicitly St. Paul, but you, you think of that. No, you think of this um, a chapter I mentioned the other day, hmm? the, the weak and the strong, hmm? uh, the, 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 uh, the, the meat that was offered to the gods. Uh, you can eat it. The strong can eat it, but the weak no, because they say, no, 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 that's that's evil, that's bad, that's that's the devil. Idols, idols. <clears throat> Other souls which are weaker, God himself accompanies, now appearing to them, now moving far, farther away, that he may exercise them in his love. For without such turnings away, they would not learn to reach God. So, uh, a little bit here, a little bit there. But the souls which are to pass on, on to that happy and high estate, the union of love, i.e. the union of love, are wont as a rule to remain for a long time in these aridities and temptations. You see, time is short here. Intens greater intensity, shorter time. Why the time is long, he explained, because they are not fully there. They are half-heartedly half there, you see. So they won't really progress. So it takes them years and they're not really progressing enough. While the brave ones, the strong ones, the courageous ones will just go for it and then it will be uh, shortened. However quickly God may lead them, uh, as has been seen by experience. You see, he's talking out of experience. Okay. It is time then to begin to treat of the second night. So now, <clears throat> finally, finally, we finished uh, our uh, book one of the Dark Knight of the sense, thank God, we finally reached that. I personally, um, uh, I'm very grateful to, to you and to this um, providence of God that allowed um, uh, us to uh, uh, appreciate, uh, read, discover, rediscover uh, St. John of the Cross teaching. Um, I enjoyed a lot uh, this uh, book, uh, first book of uh, Dark Knight. Now, as it is planned, I, I repeated it uh, various times, um, uh, the next book we should uh, read and study is the uh, second book of the Ascent of Mount Kam. So just to remind you the structure, uh, how um, they are presented when you have a book to collect the collected works of uh, St. John of the Cross, and how they um, they are intertwined, how they are intertwined. Now, uh, I can. It's. I think it's better if I draw again. I've done it before, but since now we are moving on to uh, a new stage, I will just um, uh, draw uh, draw the uh, make some drawings for you in order to understand and then we will uh, move on, okay? So just bear with me a second. It is just a, a short transition, transitioning um, uh, explanation to allow you to understand what is about to happen from now on. So let me uh, share my, my screen, sorry. Now you're supposed to be able to see my uh, screen, my um, whiteboard. Now, remember, uh, spiritual life, 
spiritual life is uh, the meeting of two beings. It's a meeting of the human being with God or Jesus. Jesus calls us, we reply. So Jesus, if you want, calls us. And then uh, we reply. We do what depends on us, I would say, with the general help of the grace of God. God then replies to our effort with a new intervention, a new intervention, which is in fact a purification as we just have seen in this, past, in this book. Purification. Without this intervention, there is no purification of the sets. So all this is categorized in sense. Okay. Now we read in order to sort of, uh, sorry, I'm trying to, uh, we read this first action here is Ascent, book one. Then we discovered God's reaction in Dark Knight, book one, which is what we just finished. Now, you remember that what he achieved is to empty, to, to, to purify, the lower half of our being, the house of the sense. But not only that, he is inviting us to activate the virtues, the theological virtues, the act of faith, the act of hope, and the act of love, which means to activate the, um, the new man in us, the upper part, working on, in the upper part of our being in order to reach God. Now this activation here starts, the description starts more or less in Ascent 1. Let me explain. He says, look at Christ, watch Christ, see what he does and listen to him and do what he, what he wants you to do. Chapter, the famous chapter 13 of Ascent 1. Huh? Chapter 13 in Ascent Book 1, which summarizes the thing. You can go back and, and, and read it or, or see the commentary we, we made on it. Now, is this all the teaching on the act of faith and, and hope and love? No, this is just the mere beginning of it. He will dedicate then in Ascent, book two and book three, to address the acts of faith, this is in book one, then hope and love in book three. Faith in book two, sorry, and love and hope in book three, in of ascent of Matkam, which is also what we are supposed to do now that we finished the purification of the sense, 
we are supposed to do in order to go through, sail through the, uh, the purification of the spirit. Okay, so let me write here now, spirit here, our spirit, okay, the upper part of our being. So in order to go through this night, we need to learn how to make what depends on us. We need to learn how to make an act of a faith and then an act of hope and then an act of love, which he dedicates the ascent book two and three to, to these acts to explain to us how it works. When we do that, when we do that, there is also another intervention, a deeper and more powerful intervention along the line of what we saw till now, but much stronger, which also not empties only the lower part of the lower part of which is the house of the sense, but it empties also the upper house. So not only we emptied the first one, now we are about, he will, he will be uh, emptying the, the upper one with this new intervention, a deeper, stronger, more intense, uh, purification. So there is uh, a, a stronger intervention. So it's still an intervention from God. There is no holiness without these interventions. There is no possible holiness without God's intervention, at least in two different, at least in two different periods in, in, our, in our lives. If, as he said, we are strong enough, etc., it's shortened. That's the first one. And then if we keep just persevering, um, it becomes, um, uh, we, we have the, the other one, intervention. Okay, so this, you find it in the Dark Knight book two. So Dark Knight, book two. Now, when you buy the books, when you open the books in the collected uh, works, for instance, of St. John of, of, of the Cross that you, we all uh, more or less have, the division it follows the books themselves, which means you have Ascent, book one, two, three, that's one book, then there, it is always followed by Dark Knight, book one and book two. And of course, in his mind, book one and two are, are one book, remember that, but this is how it is presented. So title-wise, book-wise, uh, uh, we could uh, have continued Ascent 1, then Ascent 2, and then Ascent 3, but we would be only studying what we are supposed to do in two successive um, stages of growth. While we didn't do that, we went, we, we, we finished the stages, both aspects, go our, our part and God's part. So ascent our part and dark night, God's part. We finished it for one stage, which is then ascent one, dark one, which uh, serves the uh, purification of the sense. And now we are moving on to the following one. I think pedagogically, it's it's more it's better because uh, you cannot separate ascent from dark night. What we are supposed to do and God's re response, they they play together. It's two sides of the same coin. But he wrote it this way. Now uh, we won't discuss why he did this and and not the other way. But I think it's more fruitful if we work this way. So now we went through. Uh, Ascent, uh, follow here the mouse. We did Ascent 1, now uh, Dark Knight 1. We will move now here to Ascent Book 2. Now, my idea, my idea is to do at least Ascent uh, Book 2, the essential parts of it, essential parts of it, which is various chapters. We have the 10 first chapters then I'll be picking some chapters or maybe tempted to do the entire thing. It's really beautiful, really beautiful Ascent book too. It's very solid, very solid. And it needs some explanation also, as you can, as you can see, 
Uh, it's not sometimes um, uh, obvious, and I'm sure you will enjoy it. It's really, really an enjoyable book, uh, at least the first part of it. I would be tempted not to do Ascent 3 immediately, but move on to Dark Knight 2. But it's just an idea. We still have a long journey until we reach that. May God give us uh, strength and uh, perseverance. So without further ado, if you don't mind, uh, I'll be um, now um, starting the, the new book, uh, explaining a little bit um, how um, we, 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 are, we are moving on. Um, in the beginning of this course, I did draw the ascent of Mount Carmel, the, the Mount Carmel itself and the movement. So if you don't mind, I would like just to help you understand what is at stake according to the drawing. Um, or I can do two drawings if you want. So the one of the human being, that could be one, the two houses. And then I could do also um, right after it, the one of the of Ascent of Mount Carmel, and then we will move on. I guess we will be by the end, uh, reaching the end of this uh, lesson. So without further ado, uh, I will remind you uh, of two, uh, two, two aspects. Uh, I, I just mentioned that, so I will do it very quickly uh, here, just to explain to you what is um, uh, happening. So remember, this is God um, deep, deep uh, in us, this uh, circle here. Uh, this is uh, our spirit here, uh, still in formation and in purification. And I would almost say it will start now. The deep working in the spirit will start now. I would put then a veil between the spirit itself and the upper part of the soul. Uh, remember that we have here uh, the uh, mind, we have the will, and we have the uh, memory, or mind, memory, and will. Sorry, I, I, I should have put um, uh, memory first. And well, these are the upper faculties, the rational faculties in the human being. The soul, the spirit also is composed of mind, memory, will, but it's rather uh, passive uh, or receptive. Of course, we then have the emotions. They are not mentioned by John of the Cross, but you may place them here more or less. And then you have here the, the body or uh, the sense, hmm? what we, he calls here the house of the uh, sense, which is simply the uh, lower half of our being. So uh, we are about now to see uh, God's emptied uh, this, uh, this lower house from any intervention from the milk. He is inviting us to activate the theological virtues. The John of the Cross takes for granted that. He is not clearly explained in the uh, Dark Knight book one. So we are supposed to activate the mind, the memory, and the will toward God using the three acts, faith, hope, and love. It's faith uses our mind so we can reach then God. The act of hope allows us to reach God and the act of will allows us to reach God, to enter in direct connection. This is why they are called theological. Theological because they connect us directly with theos. Theos means God. Now, this is what we saw. But in the meantime, as I explained a few, um, few um, lessons ago, a deep joy and peace seem to start to be given uh, from God through the spirit and be refracted a little bit here. It is very gentle. Remember when I talked about the gentle breeze compared to the earthquakes. So the earthquakes is the, would have been here the action of the milk and the consolations here. Uh, so the milk or the consolations.
Now, all this is gone, but something very subtle is uh, given to us in the upper part. We still have what I would call the bearings of spiritual life. Uh, the person still has a prayer life. Uh, the person enjoys a new state of freedom. That's very important here. You can read, uh, we could have done it, um, read the uh, fifth mentions of Teresa of Avila when she describes the union of will. This is the state of the person here. There is a new freedom. The person is not taken by the, uh, not moved by anything in this lower part that um, you can see here, the sense here as, as I'm showing with the uh, mouse, okay? So all this area here, doesn't have any control, any control anymore with the uh, uh, upper area. So the upper area has a certain empire, certain control, certain, uh, um, uh, I, I, I don't have the English word for it, uh, the a certain, um, yeah, I don't know, empire. in French we say empire, which is like a, a control. Um, you are reigning really on the, uh, from the upper part and controlling the lower part, which is not the case of uh, the beginning of uh, spiritual life where the lower part is still annoying very much our part and still controlling and, and tearing the person in, 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 from in one direction, another direction, and so forth. Do you have a word, Francesca, for RP in, in English? I think, um, I think you used the word reigning and I think that covers it. Yeah, reign like a kingdom, no, to reign. Yes. R-E-I-G-N, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you, yeah. So it's, it's like a, you enjoy this new freedom. You, you cross the Red Sea and now you're out of the house of slavery and the house of slavery would be in slavery to the senses, you see. Now you are, uh, you think you are totally free, but not, not totally yet. You don't know what is coming. So something is coming. Some consolations are not given down, but are starting to be given above. And still new battles are, 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 way, are still waiting uh, to be um, given here. So the, as, we saw, as we saw the analysis that John of the Cross gave us of the seven uh, sins, uh, but transported, trans, transposed into the uh, spiritual life, uh, the uh, seven spiritual sins we can fall in, we will see in the coming stage that the mind could be, the mind now, not the senses, the mind could be invaded by lights, by apparitions, by its own consolations, its own glory, its own pride, and so forth. So it's not anymore the senses, but it's a more subtle state of temptation. So as we did have some sort of milk, milk and consolations in the house of the sense, now the mind is not aware, but it has also its own temptations. And all the work of St. John of the Cross in Book 2 Ascent, and of course, Book 2 Dark Knight, would be to show us the work of our work of uh, adjusting the act of faith, having a purer act of faith, uh, not falling into the idols that can fall into the mind, because faith and mind, they go, they go together, then we will have memory and hope in book three, and will and love. Hmm? So just you need to remember that, uh, the, the, they are the pairs, uh, they go together, mind and faith, this is what we will study in book two but you still have after memory and hope and then will and love. This is how he combines the faculties of the human being, the upper rational faculties with the different three different acts, theological acts, okay? So he will show us that there are things, and please follow me here, there are things that can fall into the minds. Let us focus for now with the, with the mind. So you can have lights, uh, revelations, uh, temptations, um, uh, pride, uh, and so forth. All sorts of locutions, all sorts of um, prophet, pro prophecies, and so forth. The, you will see, it's amazing, this book, 
how many things can fall into the mind, things that are quote unquote spiritual, not anymore in the house of the sense. And then his advice is be careful, don't go there, use faith rather than whatever you are receiving. Remember Saint, um, Saint Paul when he says that the angel, uh, the Satan, uh, he, 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 this comes in disguise, um, appears like an angel of God, uh, while in fact it's, it's Satan. So what is it? It's an apparition. Why, where do, does the apparition uh, happen? It's in the mind, the imagination, the upper part, not the lower part. So St. John of the Cross then will go through different types of communications that look spiritual, that are temptations, in fact, they are not God himself, and he will uh, discern and say, no, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. Make an act of faith. Let me show you the act of faith, okay? So it's an amazing, impressive work uh, that he will undergo in book two to help us avoid come out of the narrow path of the act of faith. I'm just giving you a, a, a pre-presentation of book two and situating it with what we already, we, we, we just saw. So you can just uh, attach one part to the other, you see? Now, quickly and swiftly moving on to another drawings, I can, I can, we can talk about this um, later if, if you want or next time. But let me just draw very quickly the um, uh, ascent, the, the, the Mount Carmel itself. Union with God, please, I need your attention here. Union with God occurs when we reach the top of the mountain. This is where God only dwells. I'm, I'm in. Um, uh, rereading with you and uh, explaining a little bit the, the drawing of the um, as, um, Mount Carmel, and you can find this on the website of the School of Mary. You can uh, just click um, articles, John of the Cross, and then choose uh, the drawings of the mountain itself. Um, it, it appears there. You click on it and you can see a copy of his own uh, drawing. Uh, it's not ori an original of his, but it's a copy made. So um, now what happens here? To the right we have, and very quickly, to the right you have the, uh, the world uh, or creatures. Hmm? Creatures, the world, the material world, and there is a way here that leads to the glory of the world, the pride of the world, the consolation of the world, etc. So this is prior to conversion, prior to conversion before conversion, we are attracted by uh, things that belong to the world, sometimes good things, but they are not God uh, himself. Now, what do you have? You have conversion. Conversion brings you um, from this direction to another direction. So you start to walk, uh, I would say, uh, in, in this general direction. So you, the world is split this way. Below this red line, this, this red line here, I hope you can see this red line, this slim one, uh, it's the world. And above it, above it, this is the world here. Above it, it's the spiritual world. And this is where we are about to, uh, to, to this is where we entered, by the way, when we, emptied the house of sense it's not anymore attracted to the world we received consolations and then we moved on after that there's one step after receiving consolation which is emptying with the consolations we moved on to to um, being unconsciously tempted by another world which is another road here a little bit higher if you want if you will which is the glory of the spiritual glory, the spiritual consolations, the spiritual visions, and so forth. So it's not any more creatures, it is spiritual. But what is spiritual is not necessarily God himself, you know? 
the devil, when the devil appears to me and uh, and tricks me and and sh shows acts as if he's a, a, an angel from God or shows me a false apparition or a false revelation or false this or false that, it is spiritual. But what is spiritual? Spiritual has two meanings. Spiritual means not material. So all the invisible you can call it spiritual if you want, but that's a mix between the, the creatures and the creator. And amongst the creatures, the good ones and the bad ones. So you see, it's an entire world around. We are surrounded by an immense world, but we an invisible but immense world. Part of it is God Himself purely, the uncreated God, the Creator. But then you have the cre creatures like angels, all sorts of angels, good angels. Then you have the devils and all sorts of devils and temptations. So it's what is called spiritual needs discernment also. So what we will learn now, and I need your attention here, uh, in the book two of Ascent of Mount Carmel, is to operate another discernment, which is to split here this spiritual world in two. One is Jesus, and it's the naked Jesus, and it is to reach Jesus is a very narrow path, which is the path of the act of faith, hope, and love. And on the other side here, so on the right side, here it's Jesus. And on the left side, so we are supposed to leave all that and go toward this narrow path. So we leave the consolations, the glory, the visions, uh, uh, and so forth that are spiritual. We leave all that for just Jesus and the naked Jesus. So I'm going toward God now, not because of all what I get from him, but because of who he is and to please him. And in order to reach Jesus, I need, uh, in our case here, the act of faith. So all what John of the Cross will teach us during the book two of Ascent of Mount Carmel is to avoid this second um, Say, say, say here, this is A, just to help you understand. So A would be the world, okay? Then B here is the spiritual invisible world, but it's a mix between the devil and the angels that cre 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 um, created beings and so forth. And then here, C, it's Jesus himself. So the first stage before was A to b and c together because we didn't couldn't discern but now he will start to operate a new stage in discernment saying be careful you have in that spiritual world you have b and c it's a new phase in discernment you need to discern between b and c c is god only and he can only be reached by the act of faith and let me show you, I'm, I'm, I'm just making as if he's, he's talking to us, John of the Cross. Let me show you how to um, do an act of faith, a pure act of faith, and avoid all the tempt, quote unquote temptations, manifestations, communications that we can receive, but they are, not, they are not proper ones. And he will go through, you can already start to have a look at, at uh, Ascent of Mount Carmel book two. You will see after chapter 10, he starts one after the other, one after the other, all sorts of categories of communications, uh, spiritual communications. But only two chapters will, he will say yes to the communication, chapter 26 and 31. But all the others from chapter 11, roughly till the end of the book is no, no, no. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. That's not God. That's not God. That's not God. While, while, while the non-discerning person will say, but this is spiritual. The angel talked to me or I had a vision or I had this or, or I heard something or I, 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 in my heart, I heard this, I heard that. I'm following it. Why would it be wrong if it's coming from God? And he analyzes chapter after chapter all these parts with a parenthesis opened uh, between chapter 19 till uh, uh, 22. Uh, these chapters are dedicated just to one uh, problem, one issue, and he beautifully shows us how he reads the uh, Old and New Testament, uh, the Old Testament, and, and it summarizes everything. Okay, so you see where we are, uh, where he, uh, we ask um, uh, what we are about to do, what he is about to do, which is to teach us the act of faith, which is this narrow path here in the middle, 
that lead us to Jesus and avoid us to follow this, uh, this path is this wider path here to the left. You can see here the, uh, my, my mouth. This is the wide spiritual uh, path. He doesn't want us to go there. He wants us to take the narrow path here. Remember the gospel says the narrow path, narrow door, narrow path, etc. So that's the, the, the summary of all what he's doing. Educate us, teach us how to do the act of faith, avoid falling into these spiritual things. All this is the upper part, the upper half of our being. You see, this is the upper half of our being, which can receive, which is the mind, the mind, essentially the conscious mind, receives um, uh, lights, um, consolation, prophecies, uh, things, uh, and so forth. So that's, he says, no, be careful. That's not purely God. In order to reach God, you, only faith can give you God. It's beautiful because he says, give you God. If you want to receive God, just use the means that allows you to receive God, which is the act of faith. So that's, that's the training he's offering us in book two of Ascent of Mount Carmel, which by the grace of God, we will be uh, starting next time. Okay, uh, any questions about these two drawings? Uh, these two drawings in a way summarize I know this one, this is more anthropological. I'm showing here the human being, the uh, lower part, the lower half um, and the upper half of the human being. It's another way to describe what we just saw uh, in, in the drawing, but this is me. While here, this is him. He, he draws this, this uh, of course, not with these arrows in the middle. No, he just shows one uh, road to the right, one road to the left and the narrow path in the middle. Uh, he explains the road to the right, he explained the road to the left, and then uh, also the, the, the narrow path. But he doesn't show movement, like going from A to B and C, then from uh, discerning between B and C, so going from B, uh, being tempted by B, and going, choosing uh, C. He doesn't show the dy dynamics of, of what is happening, that you, you in fact are moving uh, and tempted. Uh, not anymore with the right road, but to, by the left road, which is more subtle, uh, but uh, much more dangerous if we fall into it and we can fall. Under. Okay. Any questions about these uh, drawings? Uh, no? Okay. So, God willing, uh, we will be starting uh, next time, um, Ascent of Mount Carmel. Uh, book two beautiful beautiful book a really really an amazing book but of course you understand that it addresses advanced things uh, you can't start to teach people just ascent because where are people you, you you don't know anything of all what we already saw which is amazing already you no know? all the work that god achieved already by emptying this uh, lower half so thank you lord for this uh, showing us the way I think that's one of the most beautiful things that the uh, St. John of the Cross and other saints also, doctors of the church, offer us, which is showing that the way, there is a journey, and this is, these are the steps, and explaining to us. So we start step by step to find ourselves, to find some bearings and understand what God uh, is doing uh, in us. Glory be to the, to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you very much.